Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! First, apologies, uh, because I was here on Friday when we got it wrong and we implied the Prime Minister had pulled off a major coup in securing Cabinet agreement on a plan for Brexit that numerous colleagues uh, evidently don't agree with. Um, didn't turn out quite that way, but maybe Theresa May is strong uh, tonight. This is certainly the strangest of times. What the resignations have done is exposed divisions in the Conservative Party, obviously, but also a tactical split within the Brexiteer camp, because you have Boris Johnson, David Davis, obviously hating the Chequers plan, but Michael Gove and Andrea Leadsom there strongly defending it. Now, that's not because uh, they take a different view as to what they want from Brexit, is that they think you just have to have Brexit in any form at all and then worry about the details later. Argue too much now and the whole process will be threatened, I think, is the thinking. Well, let us talk tactics, tactics and strategy on Brexit with the chair of the all-powerful ERG, the European Reform Group, Jacob Rees-Mogg, uh, is here. He's, and the chair of the Health Select, Com Select Committee and a Remainer, Sarah Williston. Very good evening to you both. Good evening. Sarah Williston, is this the lancing of a boil? Uh, cures it and we now move on and strong and stable? Or is this the start of a crisis? I very much hope so. And I, I wish, of course, we'd been in this position months ago. Um, but the fact is that there have been irreconcilable differences, it seems, not just in the Conservative Party, but in both main political parties. But what we absolutely needed here was a rest restoration of collective cabinet um, responsibility. We couldn't carry on negotiating with ourselves whilst we're trying to conduct this really important now, look, negotiation. The next, the next flashpoint, of course, is when concessions are made to meet the European demands and so things have to go a bit further mm -hmm. but I'm guessing that you would actually almost think she should be happy to make those concessions she, she, she can open up and now start appealing across the house to remainer types who want a softer Brexit well, yes, of course, I welcome the move to a softer Brexit. I welcome the fact that she's listened to the voice of business and, and put the economy first. And, and, of course, regulatory alignment was always going to be important if we wanted to yeah. recognise... But even softer other still. Ones. I mean, you'd be happy for it to move softer still, I think, right? Of course, but I recognise that there are tensions and that both sides have to give and take. Um, so yeah. I, I think this is a significant step forward. I welcome this. And then there's a, there's a vote in a few days, really, on the, the, mm. the, the trade bill and the, the, an amendment down to force us into a customs union. Mm -hmm. Is that gone now? Is that dead now? I, I think for the time being, people will want to give Theresa May a fair wind to carry this through. Uh, whether or not there is a backstop position put in just in case the EU reject this deal, because right. of course this all now hinges on what the EU response is. Okay. Um, Jacob Rees-Mogg, isn't Michael Gove right? Your best bet, if you want to get out, is just get out and pick up the pieces afterwards because the, the threat to getting out is going to be the, the threat of chaos and may, may, maybe people changing their mind. I think Michael's analysis doesn't work. First of all, in terms of getting out, the legislative basis for getting out is in place. So the Withdrawal Act is through and the Article 50 Act is through, which means under UK and EU law we leave on the 29th of March next year at 11 in the evening. That's point one. The second point is that if by then we have got an international treaty with the European Union and the outline for a trade negotiation, reopening that, unpicking that, will be exceptionally difficult. So I think it is very optimistic right. to suppose... You've got to do it now. You've got to do it now. Now is the essential time. But if nothing is done between now and the 29th of March, we leave without a deal. That is now the legal position. Right. And, and you're happy enough with that position anyway? You think it's not the best position, you know, but it is a very satisfactory right. fallback position. You, you've, been, you've been very loyal to Theresa May today. You've been saying you wanted to change her Chequers plan, but you're very loyal to her. Now, let us suppose, as seems very likely, she doesn't change the Chequers plan. Do you... You can't remain loyal to her, no? The personal loyalty is separate from policy loyalty. Right. The question the Prime Minister faces, and it's a really serious one for her, is she can either go back on her plan and go back to what she said before. And the real difficulty that uh, leavers have is that the Prime Minister is not doing what she said she would do. And that is very damaging. So that's choice so one. That's go choice back, one, go is to go back to Lancaster House. Mm -hmm. Choice two is to get it through on the back of Labour votes. Now, to get a major part of the government's programme through on socialist votes is really damaging to the Conservative Party and historically 
has presaged a big split why, why, within why, the party. This surely isn't about internal party politics. This is about what's best for the country and best for our economy. Shouldn't that be the priority of here? Of, of course it shouldn't. What is best for the country is leaving the European Union, yeah, which is a failed economic model. There's Look there's at disagreements over that, there. <laughs> so okay. the point is, if 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 you. Why be fussy about which votes you want to get? If you can uh, get Labour votes, I mean, she, she'll be happy to get Labour uh, votes, wouldn't uh, she, Theresa May? I completely accept there is a difference, there, But what is so important is that politicians do what they said they would do. And that is what Mrs May is failing to do in but this. So you think, but, but, sorry, but Jacob, you have relied on Labour votes yourself in the past to get uh, policy issues through on Brexit, like in the most recent votes, like, taking six votes from the Labour Party. So I mean, we can't pick and choose. We just need to be realistic that there is a difference of opinion on both sides of the House mm. on this really fundamental mm. issue. This is, sorry to interrupt. This isn't mm. talking about two or three votes. This is talking about 50 to 100 votes. It would be a really major split within the party organised okay. by the top of the party. And, and if Theresa May shows an inclination to say, let's take those Labour votes, and today it seemed they were going to because they were trying to brief some Labour MPs, they were planning to brief Labour MPs on the Chequers deal. If she takes that choice, at that point, you'll well, put your name, you'll, you'll send your letter no, in I'm together. No, I'm not writing um, any no. letters to um, Sir Graham Brady. I'd just remind the Prime Minister about Sir Robert Peel. Sir Robert Peel did not lose any vote on the Corn Laws. He lost it on an Irish coercion bill. That it is very, very dangerous territory for Prime Ministers to rely on opposition votes because they find they are fair-weather friends. They're not there every day of the week. What Prime Ministers need is a loyal party that backs them day in, day out. But, but you know... So back her. <laughs> If they, she'd, they if, she's, if she stuck to her policy, <laughs> you see, that's what she uh, means. It's a loyal you know, party. She, you she can't would, argue with a loyal party and then yeah, and, 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 and you, then you, say, but you're but not the, going to back the her. The leader has to be loyal to the party in return. <laughs> and she, the prime minister set out very, very clearly at Lancaster House what her policy would be. And Chequers is not that policy. Chequers is not really leaving. It introduces the acqui communautaire for goods and agri goods. It means that the European Court would determine how those rules were interpreted. Sarah, I want to give a last word to Sarah. Sarah Wollaston, isn't the truth that your party is absolutely ragged on this? There have been sweary emails going between your own MPs. There have been... Uh, not involving uh, either. Uh, uh, nothing, sorry, nothing. sweary <laughs> tweets. Sweary <laughs> We've had, you know, what, what, one MP saying, good day in Westminster and picture of the Titanic. Don't you have to essentially say this is just a free vote matter. We, we, we cannot keep this party together on that. Let people vote with their conscience in the Cabinet or out of the Cabinet. What's wrong with just doing it that I way? I don't think you can have that in the Cabinet. You have to have a collective position. Um, but personally, I'm, I'm more comfortable than Jacob is with the idea of having free votes because I think this really is something. We just have to accept there are very strong differences of opinion. I think we do need to listen to the views of the 48% as well as the views of the 52%. And, and I'm afraid that the fact is that even within that 52%, there is clearly a difference of opinion. And the, and the trouble, of course, with any combination you want to pick, um, you're going to find that a very significant people, group of people are unhappy. This is a pragmatic way forward. OK, we'll leave it there. Thank you both very much Thank indeed. You.